Hey everyone, this is Pete from Zengig. Thanks for joining. And I'm with Eugene DeMasso, who is partner with Kubo Studio and a professional architect of how many years, Eugene? How long have you? 20 plus. 20 plus. <laughs> you look way too young to have been an architect for that long. So good, good for you. Kubo Studio is, you founded last year and business is going very well from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's going really well. It's kind of been, you know, a great journey that 20 years to get to this point. It, and it's it's been a, a fun ride. It's, it's a promising future for, for us. And we're excited to to be able to share that uh, with our community. So. Wonderful. You're also an adjunct professor at University of Florida where, where you went to school and you've been doing that for a long time too. Yeah. And uh, at University of Florida City Lab, it's a, it's a local uh, satellite program. And um, I've been doing that for about 10 years, uh, teaching design studios and uh, various uh, other courses and really enjoy that. You know, it, it has an impact on our, you know, our profession and the people that are coming out of uh, school. And uh, I really enjoy engaging students and, and young professionals through that. What does it take to become an architect? Yeah, so here in the U.S., um, there are uh, accredited degree programs. Uh, there's two types of programs out there. There's a five-year professional bachelor's program, and then there's also uh, a master's program or a four plus two um, accredited um, professional program that uh, various you know, through various universities. I'm a you know University of Florida grad, and we had a four plus two. So so you go through that from an education standpoint, and then you can sit for a, an exam. The exam is a multi-part exam, and in order to receive your license, you have to take that exam, pass the exam, but also you have to get hours in in the field as well to get your license. So it's experience plus examination plus education in order to to become a licensed architect. So that's actually quite a long journey. You know, it, we, it, they've kind of been, we've been able to kind of narrow it down a little bit, but at the end of the day, you can have uh, quite a bit of experience, maybe rivaling, you know, some doctors and, you know, in terms of numbers of years of experience before your license, perhaps. And it, it can, it can be a little bit of a long road. But well worth it at the end, uh, of yeah, course, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, can you accumulate the hours you needed you need for your license while you're in school, or does that happen after graduation? Yeah, you can. There, there is an accelerated program out there that they've just rolled out, probably about I say three or four years ago, where you can accumulate those hours, work while you're in school, and then also be able to take your exams. And then by the end of your uh, six-year program, uh, you can also. Um, have all your tests taken. So they really accelerated that. Uh, it's quite the feat, you know, it's not for everyone, but you have that path for those that are able to kind of navigate um, that, that route as well. Wonderful. Um, well, good deal. Well, th thank, thank you so much for that. I mean, it's, it's, I didn't realize there, there was that much time that it was required before you can, you can practice. Yeah, it, it is quite a bit of time and, and it can get really, challenging right life can get in the way and you know they I, I remember when they rolled out that new program that i just mentioned they you know part of part of it was you know they were seeing an average of 12 years after 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 graduation of of architects taking the exam and so that was just a it's a really long time right and so life gets in the way you, you know, and it just takes time and so they've created that program with the intent of helping to kind of accelerate that and, and hopefully give uh, people more opportunities to do that in that way. Awesome. Well, it's important yeah. that everyone knows what they're getting into if, if they're if yeah. going to pursue the profession. So let's talk about skills set a little bit that is required for success. And if you don't mind, separate soft skills and hard skills with this. So start with hard skills. What kind of aptitude do you think is necessary for someone to succeed as an architect? So architecture is a pretty broad, a broad profession. You can you can choose to kind of focus in different areas or you can be a generalist and be able to kind of touch, you know, all the different parts. You have a very technical aspect to architecture, you know, everything from, you know, working on the building science of it to and the law side of it, the codes and, and all of that, to the to the the artistic side. I, I mean I have I have colleagues and fellow classmates that are artists, right? That went into architecture, did architecture, eventually became artists. So there's a quite a spectrum of, of, of where you can 
kind of lead. So as a generalist, you know, you're, you're working, you know, working on design and then seeing that design through to construction for, for projects and clients. So it's quite a various, again, various set skill sets, design itself, you know, tends to be on the art artistic side. But yet there's a, a technical side, right? You, you're learning and modeling and technology and software as a young designer, but then you're also communicating ideas, right? You're communicating ideas about the building, priorities, you're listening to clients and you're able, you, you have to communicate and navigate and then take and hear what a client says and be able to put that on paper. That's probably one of the hardest things, right? To be able to translate your thoughts into something built right uh, you're and so that that as a designer is, is, is quite the skill set and then and then be able to deliver is kind of the other end of the spectrum of you know how do you take that once you have a vision and then be able to you know <clears throat> construct it you know put it in a budget see that budget all the way through and then be able to get it to a full building where we're walking through and and, see, and navigate that waters where you're dealing with dozens of contractors and parts and pieces of the building that in and of themselves are their own specialties. So, And you, so it, it, does it involve a lot of project management skills mm -hmm. then too? I mean, to do all that, cause that's a, that's yeah. a lot going on that, that sounds like you're the central point for. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the project management is definitely a component of it, right? Like how, you know, the delivery part and how do you, you know, take, you know, that vision and, and implement it and disseminate it to a team, especially as you get larger projects, you can, you know, I've, I've worked on a hundred million dollar hospital, right? You've got a team of 12 people and you've got to tackle this building, break it down into multiple pieces and, you know, you go through a schedule and be able to kind of go through a set of tasks that kind of are meeting uh, the overall vision of the project, you know, in different phases. And so there is, the project management component of is definitely a, you know, once you get to the point of that vision and being able to deliver it, it's uh, so crucial to success and in, in, in the overall uh, process. You you mentioned communication skills, listening and and then communicating back. Some some professions are better than others for different personality types. We know that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that an introvert can can succeed as an architect or is it really do you really have to have some sort of extroversion in order to uh, to thrive I, I would actually probably consider myself an introvert to a certain degree i think i think there's you know definitely a place and as i mentioned you know you could be a generalist and kind of touch all the different parts and pieces and you could be you know kind of sitting behind your computer and working through those technical aspects and and really you know enjoy that part of uh putting a building together in a in a in a, in a real solid way and so have a real strong technical part of that where you're coordinating with engineers and 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 that could be a little bit more conducive to maybe someone who's who who is maybe an introvert but communication is is important right in terms of you know how you know what you're doing and how it relates to everything that's happening around you i think that's one of the things about architecture it's it's very broad and so we could you know divide it up into pieces but you know, you're still how you still have to communicate it back out to the rest of the group. You might be delivering one part of it, but that communication is is crucial. And that happen that can happen, you know, three dimensionally in a model if we're building a model, and or it can be verbally and you know via traditional communication routes. Before we move on from the skills part of our conversation, what what about technical skills in terms of? software tools do you have to have aptitude for, for that you know i yeah i know back in the old days there was a lot of you know you, you may have learned to do things by hand right but that yeah. doesn't really exist yeah. anymore does it yeah i think there is still a technical especially as you're starting out there's definitely a technical part of that so i so i actually i was doing drafting when i was in high school right uh, actually middle and high school you know hand drafting and you know technical drawing that's a that's a form of communication Sure. For for us, and so now what it's turned into is there's it's a modeling software. We're thinking about it three dimensionally, and then if you start to layer on their construction, you're thinking about it from a time standpoint too. So, so it's become much more robust in terms of drawing. It's the drawing is more of a model. We're thinking about it three dimensionally, information intelligently. Uh, so rather than it used to be CAD, it's now BIM. It's building information modeling. 
So we're we're creating, you know, we're creating three dimensional elements that are intelligent. They're they know what they are. They're it's a wall, right? And so and it has properties and it has, you know, dimension and thickness and it there's different, you know, pieces of that that really can start to, you know, be very, very detailed. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, yeah. we can't we can't talk about anything today without thinking of AI and the impact mm-hmm. that it will have. So how how do you foresee that it will impact the the profession of architecture and then and then any kind of time frame associated with that? On things are developing quickly right now. Yeah, I, I've I've seen it. I, I've, I've tried to keep up with it. I've seen it definitely on the design side, and you you, you probably if you kind of take a look, you'll you'll see uh, various programs out there that you know they'll they'll put a box in and it'll show you a complete rendering of different ideas from. Actually, I've, you know, I've messed with some of that and it is, you know, it's pretty powerful, uh, but I do think at the end of the day, it does come back to a foundation of knowledge, right? In terms of being able to judge, you know, you know, the, whether something is the right, deli- it's, a, it's the right prod- end product. But I do think, I mean, I have seen it. So in the technology side, you know, it is, you know, making things easier on when in the programs like the BIM model. So be, because there is vast amounts of information, being able to call through that type of that type of information, AI is definitely making an impact. I do think on the design side, it it it, it on the high end design side, I think there's probably more of an allure for you know these amazing buildings that will take some effort to translate into buildable projects. Sure. But they are, they are, you know, very imaginative. Some of them, though, if you start to look at them, it, they start to look the same as well, too. It's kind of interesting, right? Like, you can tell, oh, that was, you know, that was probably AI, you know. And, sure. and so the the unique qualities, you know, that's where you really have to understand, okay, you know, are, is there, you know, is it really you know, tailored to what you're trying to do? That's what we do every time. Every time we do a new building, there's, there's probably – you know, you think, you know, you know, you try not to do cookie cutter, right? Like unique, everything's, you know, pretty unique when it, at the end of the day, it's a unique environment, it's a new, unique context. And so, you know, we try to respond to that and it ends up being never really exactly the same. And so AI, I don't think it's quite picked up on those nuances. And so you as an architect would have to really kind of guide, guide the tool. We see it as a tool and, and I think it rightly so it's, it's going to have a big impact on our industry. Yeah, if it can make your job easier, if you could make it uh, be more efficient, right? Why, yeah. why, you know, just makes a lot of sense to leverage that. Yeah, yeah, and I think I, I do think um, if you can find the right applications of it, I think if you look at it as you know, is it going to be the end all be all for design? I don't think that's the the answer for it, especially right now. And if you're looking to it to 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 do something like that, then I think you're you're probably asking too much of it at this point, but. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of an interesting dialogue. It's an interesting scenario that we're in because, you know, we do a lot of writing, you know, writing is a, is a big part of how we can leverage that as a tool as well. Sure. And so, so we can, we see that there as well. So, so that's interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have associated writing with, with, with what you do. What, where does that come into play? So it comes to play a lot of ways. We, one of the things is, you know, this may be, it may may have an application for AI or not, but specification. So everything that we put into a building, we have to describe, you know, its qualities, its materials, its technical aspects, things like sustainability and, and, you know, fire and fire protection qualities to materials, ANSI standards and, and all of that, that you get, you know, a binder thick of specifications with a binder of, drawings it's it's very actually very very it's a lot of writing but then on the other side is you know it's again kind of goes back to that communication part of it right like right. you know we all have to market you know um talk about our our projects and so how you say it concisely how you describe something concisely and communicate you know what it is we're doing and that's a really big part of what we do Sometimes you like to think, okay, I, I create this building and then create this design it, and it should speak for itself, but you know, not everybody is in tune with, you know, they, you know, there's a lot of questions. And so how you describe it can help guide people to the thinking behind what you're creating. 
I'm glad that came up. I didn't, I don't, I didn't, I don't know that everyone would intuitively realize that, right? Then that's one of the things that I always like to find out from anyone in, in a profession that is, what are some things that look from the outside looking in, because that is writing for me with architecture, but what are some things that people wouldn't necessarily know or, or would surprise most people about the, you know, what life is like as an architect? I, I think I'm always surprised at how broad, broad it is. I've talked about this, you know, we, you can focus on, you know, the technical aspect or you can be an artist and, you know, engage in that discussion. I think another thing that I, I find fascinating about architecture and it's kind of a simple thing, but it, it probably can be applied to a, a lot of different fields is like, you're literally building something bigger than yourself. Right. And it's, it, and it's something that will most likely outlive you in the in the history in history right in terms of you know maybe two or three times hopefully if it's really good it'll never go down sure. and no, nobody will ever get rid of it but that to me is one of the fascinating parts of of architecture is that uh, we're, we're making a statement not just for our culture but you know generations behind us and so that's that's where good architecture if, if it's really good it it, it leaves an impact and, you know, you won't want to change it, right? It'll be celebrated. People will find new uses for it, even if it's, you know, maybe not the same original use and it'll be, it'll be an impact on future generations for a culture. And so that's why we look at, you know, really good architecture places like, you know, European architecture are really well-designed places, you know, people want to add to them and, and, and continue to upkeep them. When we bat, we design really bad buildings that, you know, people want to tear them down and right. let's do something new in two years. Right. <laughs> like, and well, so just, I, just this morning I was reading coincidentally on, there's a Twitter thread about the pyramids of Giza and, and it was, you know, talk about those. And I was thinking about our conversation you know, that we were going to have later that from an architect standpoint, that just has to be a marvel, right. For yeah, you to look yeah. at, these things have, have, have lasted thousands of years, right? What a, what a, what, and no one, and no one even knows how they came to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and yeah, yeah. And the, the technical aspect of it, right? Like how could you even with the technology, you know, how can you, you know, that be, that feat be accomplished. And then the, and, and I've never been, but I mean, the beauty of it too, right? Like it's, you know, this massive monumental structure that, you know, has stood the test of time, you know, so there's a beauty to that. So I, I always, you know, I always say, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're not designing something, if you're, if you're designing something successful, it's going to be around for a long time because people are going to love it and it's going to be timeless. And, and that's, that's good architecture. Is there a landmark or a building that you could name that you wish, you know, you look at and say, I wish I had been the one to design that. Is there anyone in particular that stands out? <laughs> No, no, I, 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 I mean, there's so much, I, I, I love being an architect because I, I travel, when I travel, there's always something to see and I really enjoy just good architecture, you know, when the good architecture really, you know, takes into consideration people as well, right, in terms of how they engage it and, you know, how you interact with other people through time. And so I, I think I appreciate a lot of different styles and style, you know, but there's, so much good architecture out there that you can really appreciate and, you know, and it's inspiring, right? You know, and, and it's, Absolutely. again, you're building, again, building something bigger than yourself. You're the, 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 the massive cost and effort in terms of people and involved and in getting it to, you know, whatever, however long that process is two or three years, right? Seeing something through that period of time is, is, is a feat in of itself. You know, it's not just digital. It's not like you can take it and hit delete, <laughs> right? right? At one point, you you have to you know own it. It has to get built, and and you know there's there's challenges with it. You know, there's the legality of it, right? That's a there's a there's a legal component to it, and a lot um, of responsibility tied to it with what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. So. If we could go back to specialties for just for a second, because you you, you alluded to you, know, you you could be a generalist or or specialize. What are some of the the specialties that um, someone could pursue? Yeah, so so I actually I do have a specialty that I've kind of 
picked up on. I mean, one of them is is healthcare. Healthcare is a definitely a specialty. There's a body of knowledge there that you just have to be aware of this different set of codes that are associated with that building type. Sure. And then the thinking, just, I mean, just the array of issues that come along with that as an issue, right? Healthcare, wellness, and, and that as a realm of, of issues and, and ideas in and of itself. So healthcare is one of education. I, I, I do some education. Education is, you know, a lot of people really enjoy education. There's so many different ideas about it in terms of how to learn and the spaces in which you learn. And if you go to a like a, a campus, like a if you go over to UCF or someone, something like that, there's so many different types of buildings on 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 university campuses. So you can go you know, do anything. So you, I say it's a specialty, but they they also say that. In, in higher ed, at least every building is a specialty in, in and of itself, right? So you sure. could be in the fine arts where you're, you know, dealing with more studios, or you can be in, you can be in the performing arts, right? It could be music and performing spaces, which are completely different. It could be a general classroom, which, you know, we kind of, you know, it's, it's more about, you know, how do you, you know, depending on the size of the, of the groups, you know, how do you establish good communication and an and environment for learning? could be a library, could be a student, you know, rec center. I mean, there's so many different t- building types. So there's which education. See, which, I, which I had a front row view, so to speak, of seeing yeah. uh, you know, from concept to completion that, that yeah, work you did, you did there. And it was, yeah, uh, it was just, it was breathtaking and continues to be breathtaking today. And that, that, you know, has to, so, so to your point, I, I, when I think of education, I, th- I you default to classrooms. But mm-hmm. when you think of the different facilities that are needed, buildings, you know, what needs to be addressed, yeah, it's very diverse. Yeah, and in each in in each one's you know a problem to solve, right? And there's, you know, I I it's funny because I when the Moore Center that you're talking about, you know, we were working on that. You know, I I would say that you know I've, I've never you know before we did the Moore Center, I've never done a Moore, Moore Center, right? Because <laughs> sure. it's very unique in of itself, right? Like you're combining the the fitness and sports aspect with classroom building with a a hall type building to to kind of be flexible and host different events so there's a that's kind of a you know a, a different thing in in of itself right so yeah yeah everything's you know it has its nuances so it's sure. never boring you know it, it sounds like it ever changing too with each new project yeah. comes with its own requirements and the challenges yeah. that, that go with that. Yeah. And I, I think that's the part where I love, you know, I'm a learner, right? And so every every new project, whether it be a healthcare project or an education project, you come and you're constantly learning. I, you know, I have a body of knowledge. I've been doing this for 20 years. So I bring a body of knowledge, but really, you know, the people that we're building for also have, they're, they're their own experts, right? You're, you're your own expert in, in what they do. And so we had to go through this process of kind of drawing out, you know, what, you know, what will make you successful? What, what are your needs? And so that becomes, that's part of this, the design process and the communication process of, you know, listening to people, but then also being able to draw out, you know, you know what needs are and aspirations are and, and, and going through that as well. So I don't know that there's many professions that, require as as much of a, a diverse skill set right from from artistic yeah. talent to communication technical skills being a visionary you know and then and then figuring out how to uh, put it all together right which is yeah. its own you know, there's a lot of people who are great visionaries but can't bring anything to completion but you don't have that option as, as yeah. an architect right you have to deliver yeah. you know and, yeah. and then budget considerations too that has to be a big uh, factor right when you when you're Absolutely. working on a new project I assume there's always a number that you have to uh, be considerate of. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that's a huge driver, you know. And they, they could, you could be what's called a, a paper architect, right? Where you're you're drawing things, but then never building things because of those types of things where you're not meeting a budget. So, then you know, paper architect, architecture is not what I I would aspire to, but you know, but the, the built the actual built architecture is 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 actually a great thing to accomplish at the end of the day after all at least after all you go through <laughs> i love that yeah. i love that well you you've given 
so much great knowledge and, and advice already. But but let me just ask if you were if you since you speak to students since you teach them already, what what advice would you give to someone who's aspiring o- overall? I mean, you know, in, when they're looking out on their career, is there is there anything that you would uh, just say? Hey, if you're thinking about doing this, here's here's my tips. What would those be? Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about doing this, you have to really. I, I do think it's it's a it's a love, right? You know, there you really have to really be passionate about. You don't have to be passionate about every every part of it, right? You could be again kind of a specialist in a particular area, but you 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 do have on, on a certain level have to have a passion to really kind of um, go through because it is challenging, right? It, you know the. The licensure could take longer than than you want, or your you know the you know the construction right. Those kind of things you have to kind of go past that. Those are the challenges, and really at the end of the day, see you know I'm working on something you know bigger than myself, and you know working with a great team, a client that you know whose vision I believe in in terms of what they're aspiring to as an organization. Those are the kind of things that I would hold on to. And, you know, and I didn't, I don't know if I really saw that coming out of school, but the, the impact that architecture has on a community and, and on an organization. And that's, that's, those are the rewarding things at the end of the day that you're, yes, you're building a building, but you're building a building for people and an organization. And that will, that has its impact on society. So I think at the end of the day, if you see, if you're able to see something like that, you're, you're able to walk, you're able to go through the challenge, you know, challenges of, you know, licensure and the challenges of, you know, getting through that, getting that experience and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think that's perfect. I think that's, yeah. I, I, I could keep you all day, but I promise you I wouldn't. So yeah. well, I could I talk about it all day. So listen, we'll, we'll get questions and uh, hopefully we, we, we have some that'll come in for those watching this video. And if you're willing to come back and, uh, and help address those and then, then we'll, we'll do it again. But uh, for now, thank you so much for, for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, Eugene DeMasso of uh, Kubo Studios. Thank you. And I wish you continued success. All right. Thank you, Pete.